Tokyo BSC Limited, Mrs. Dina Mehta, Chairman Capital Market Committee, to please, uh, may also request Mr. Jitendra Sangvi, Deputy Director General IMC, and Mr. Chandrasekhar Thakur, a uh, trainer from CDSL, to please come and join, uh, do the lightning of the line. Thank you. Thank you. May I request you to please come on the dais? Hmm. Uh, may I request Mr. Pramod Thakkar, President IMC, to give welcome address? Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Sri Ashish Kumar Chauhan, MD and CEO, Bombay Stock Exchange Limited. Dina Mehta, Chairperson, our own Dina Mehta, Chairperson of the Capital Market Indian Merchant Chamber, and my colleague, Mr. Jitendra Sangvi, Deputy Director General, Indian Merchant Chamber. Many dignitaries, professors, senior citizens, my very various familiar faces and friends, and young students. There is something common I was just thinking about today's event. And today's very important topic, and that is number six. What is six? We are in the sixth decade, or we have just completed 60s plus uh, to our independence. And you, youngsters, who are representing 65% of the population of India, and 65% of the GDP of India is a service industry. So there is a lot of commonality on the six. But before I go into that, let me warm, let me welcome each one of you. Give a warm welcome on behalf of Indian Merchant Chamber of Commerce and also Bombay Stock Exchange through this very, very pertinent event for which we have gathered today. A very important topic, a very timely topic and that is what are the opportunities in the service sectors, especially in the financial services. Mumbai is the capital of business in India, but I would say it, it's predominantly more into financial services. If there is a financial hub, perhaps in Asia, one most vibrant with, with all the limitations, with all the challenges, is the Mumbai city. So once again, welcome all of you. I'm duty-bound to also uh, say a few words about Indian Merchant Chamber of Commerce. Many of you know what Indian Merchant Chamber of Commerce is. It's an 108-year institution, which was established in the background of Swadeshi movement in 1907. Our founder, Mr. Ramji, uh, who took initiative for Indian Merchant Chamber of Commerce, that was probably the first Indian Merch Chamber of Commerce for Indian, by Indian, and off Indian. There was another Chamber of Commerce which was representing only British community because those days all the trades, commerce, shipping, manufacturing, service industry was all dominated by British companies and many other MNC companies. So somebody who was inspired by Swami Vivekananda, if any, many of you would know, Swami Vivekananda passed away in 1902. So Ramdasji was very much influenced by him and he established this Indian Merchant Chamber of Commerce. So when you go to Church Gate Station, adjacent to that, there is a building. That plot was, even those days, it was a very costly piece of uh, land. Probably this coastal line of Mumbai city was much uh, more closer to Church Gate Station than what you see today. So it was a very costly piece of land which he uh, donated. Uh, Indian Merchant Chamber of Commerce since then has been advocating the, a lot of causes, social, industrial, manufacturers, traders, and, uh, you know, especially 
uh, 50s, 60s, and 70s, and even up to 91, we had a closed door economic environment, and a number of issues were there that the trade and commerce had, and uh, that was a very difficult, challenging time for business community to even survive. And that is a time that Indian Merchant Chamber has been associated with all the issues and all the trade. Just to give you an example, the impact of Indian Merchant Chamber of Commerce. Many of you may not even know because of your generation gap, uh, but many would also recall. Our union budget used to be presented only at 5 o'clock in the evening. And uh, so even after, many, many years after independence, that continued. And IMC took up the issue with government of India. Why are we doing budget only at 5 o'clock in the evening? Because that was done because of the British legacy. Because that time was suitable to the Queen of England. Because 5 o'clock our time in the evening was 9 o'clock London time. So it was IMC who... Uh, made up presentations to government of India and that has an influence and today now the union budget is presented as per the trading time of Mr. Uh, 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 Bombay Stock Exchange and Mr. Chawan and his team. So that is what Bombay Chamber of Commerce do. What's our theme? Every year we have a different theme. Last year we had a theme of sustainable growth. This year uh, I have decided that we must concentrate more on governance. And governance in isolation was also an incomplete. So I thought the best would be to growth with the governance. Because we believe that governance is not new to India. I believe that if you see all our Shastras, all our Vedic, our Upanishads, and those who have attended some of the Diwali Pujan, they will know that there is a one symbol. And everywhere you go in the rural area, outside the house, and even in Mumbai today, that practice and tradition is there, you will read Shubhalab, the word Shubhalab. What is the Shubhalab? It's not only good luck. It's not any, uh, you know, uh, a just a sign. Shubhalab means a lab which must be Shubh. It has to be auspicious. It should come through governance. So... We have always worshipped, our ancestors have also worshipped. Perhaps Indian culture is the only culture which has acknowledged that wealth creation is not a crime. But we have also recognized that how we should generate the, how we should create the wealth. A wealth in isolation is also dangerous. So growth alone is also dangerous. There are examples, unfortunately, like some of the countries in Africa. They have a huge amount of petroleum, a huge amount of minerals. And uh, I'm sorry to say that even Russia is just coming out of it. But they have a huge wealth of so many talent and so much of a wealth uh, underneath uh, their seabed, their, their, their land area. But somehow the governance is an issue. What we did from 47 onward was only governance. We forgot the word growth. So the governance aimlessly created only bureaucracy, jungle of rules, regulations, and that created vested interest. And we, we end up what we ended up till 1991, then the doors were opened. And I believe now that the different time has come. The good news is for all of you is that India is on move. Believe me, I come from a generation which I cannot afford to disassociate yourself, but I, can al I also have a recollections of 70s and 80s. This is an amazing area. However, unfortunately, we took 60 years to enter into a one trillion economy. Probably in next 10 years, we will be getting into a two trillion economy. And probably next 10 years, will be another 5 trillion economy. That is what India is. No politicians, no vested interest will be able to stop the growth of this country. I can assure you that. That's a strength that India has. And that is more so. One of the biggest assets that India has is you youth, which I see in majority in here. And you have a huge opportunity. Coming back to the topic that today Dina Met, uh, has chosen, and she always come up with not only very interesting topic, but she selects the right timing. She selects the right agenda. And so beautifully, your program has been structured. You know, I, I come from also the insurance industry. I come from financial services. Let me give you one example. It's little bad news from insurance industry point of view, which you would like to hear, and maybe this is a good news for you. There is an acute shortage of talent. 
on one hand and that's a, that's a part of the dilemma this country has will have to tackle on one hand there is a huge unemployment on another hand there is a shortage of talent i had last year my budget in my little company of 400 people i wanted 90 people i could barely select and recruit 58 people out of which 32 left so i ended up having only 28 to 29 new talent net recruitment against my target of 90 90 now on another hand you will find that you know every now and then we encounter and read in the news media that you know there is an unemployment the problem we have is we have lot of graduates we have lot of lot of uh, 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 talent available but there is a mismatch the industry is crying for talent and the youngsters and the other job aspirants are looking for jobs there is a mismatch so what is the next level and here where i think i must uh, acknowledge what our very popular prime minister has said mr narendra modi has very ably and identified this topic of skill development the skill development is the only answer that perhaps india will have to do it in absence of skill development what is happening in uh, because of the lack of talent and mismatch it's not that the talent is not available it's not getting connected and i must give you one more good news and you are you should all feel very proud and very uh, fortunate then most of these jobs most of this growth story the benefit goes to the best metro cities mumbai delhi calcutta chennai bangalore ahmedabad and hyderabad and few other cities the all the best jobs goes to all the best all these cities so what happens to the many b cities what happens to many other rural area the talent has no monopoly it has no geographical barrier all this lovely talent is also available across the india but somehow they are not able to connect it to the mainstream of the industry and mainstream of the growth so in one hand you should feel very fortunate on another hand i feel sorry i feel at pain to see that we are not able to connect it to the rural mass the large talent that is available in absence of that what is happening is that service is becoming very very costly now one of the reason the people do say that what's the reason for inflation inflation is not only because of the petroleum fluctuation in petroleum products or lack of agriculture production it's also the cost and of course the real estate and the corruption there are a number of issues that we have so i think what we are you are going to discuss thanks to again our uh, Uh, capital market committee led by dina mehta a very uh, scientifically and uh, topics have been identified and i want to only assure you one thing that you have a huge future i was talking to one of our colleagues here i said when we were growing we had only one chance of doing anything and if you fail you are done away you get into a wrong loop wherein you have you know such an era that probably that you will have a different problem a problem of plenty you have a number of opportunities so my only advice is when i say you know people say what do i do i always say do what your soul says and do what your core competences identify what your core competences and that's a beautiful quote in the bhagavad gita about this it's a best management book that i adore to is that bhagavad gita which says swadharme nidayam shreha par dharmo bhayavaham whatever is your core competence that is your swadharma adopt that anything you try and you know copy others or imitate others uh, you know he makes more money or he, because he looks better because of this this perception game i think that perception game nobody has won so my advice is and if i have a recommendation and this is what i would share with my daughter and i would love to share with you is that go by what your inner voice is where your talent lies rest will follow rest indian economy will is waiting to uh, adopt you i i i i have said it and i love to say this again and again each one of you are going to be millionaire in your own right unless somebody gets into a bad loop or negative habits otherwise no power on the earth will stop your prosperity with this words i wish you good luck thank you very much thank you mr takkar uh, may i now request mr ashish kumar chauhan to please give the address
श्री प्रमोद टक्कर श्रीमती दीना मेहता जितेंद्र संघवी फ्रेंड्स लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन इट्स अ प्लेजर एंड ऑनर टू बी इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू आई हैव बीन टोल्ड टू स्पीक ऑन द कैरियर्स इन फाइनेंस एंड आई विल टेक यू थ्रू सम ऑफ द इंटरेस्टिंग एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ कैरियर इन फाइनेंस एंड ऑल्सो आई ऑल्सो टेल यू वाई आई एम सो होपफुल अबाउट इंडिया ओवर नेक्स्ट थर्टी फोर्टी ईयर्स विच इज वॉट इज गोइंग टू बी योर कैरियर स्पैन uh if you recall uh last year before the election and if you were uh, listening to television if you were reading up newspapers magazines you would have figured uh several issues were there with india we were looking very bad uh one of the biggest issues which india has faced uh, since time immemorial at least for last 3 400 years is poverty we live in abject poverty although many of you come from good families good area uh, good uh, college education and so on and so forth but large portion of india uh, lives in abject poverty how do we bring up uh, our population to a reasonable uh, standard of living second issue is the population we are uh, the second largest nation in the world but more interestingly uh, we occupy 2% of world's land, land mass only 2% of the world land mass is occupying uh, occupied by india and 17% of world population uh, we represent effectively our density of population is very very high and many of them are not literate many of them are, are not having the exposure of getting into the newer way of life the third problem which we were facing over last 5 6 years was huge inflation whether it was commodities Uh, of services any type of uh, sort of prices they were rising and that was creating uh, amount of disgruntlement in the population fourth is of course corruption and corruption is not new to india we have been tol- talking about black money and so on and so forth but corruption has been part and parcel of everything uh, which we have done over last 5000 years 10000 years and 200 years also robert clive also when he came to win india uh, he became corrupt and there were allegations of corruption against him in british parliament so effectively people who come here also become corrupted and we were basically a hugely corrupt society forever now suddenly we have woken up and that needs to be removed from public life and of course from private life and it's not a corruption only of money when you pedal influence it's still corruption many times it looks as if people who take only money are corrupt and people who get scholarships for their grandson for america or wherever using uh, industrialists they are not corrupt all types of corruption is prevalent in india and if india has to come up it has to deal with corruption once and for all and it's a huge issue black money is part of that and we must ensure as as people who have some vested interest in the future of this country to ensure that we solve it in a more what i call civil non violent way and hopefully this government will be able to do that other issue we were fa- facing was fiscal deficit we were running very high fiscal deficit lot of subsidies most of the subsidies were going getting actually uh, used up in other purposes uh, revenue deficit was high we were I mean, the government was getting less money uh, it was spending more money uh, and so that itself was an issue which it still is uh, indirect tax evasion uh, and direct tax evasion a uh, bad money lots of bad laws over uh, last 67 years we generated many laws but even before that there were many laws in british raj we just, just sort of inherited and today the laws or the legal system is such that if you do something you are violating some law and if you don't do the same thing you are violating some other law effectively we have too many contradictory laws and we need to make it Uh, sort of rationalized make it easy for uh, living life not only for doing business uh, red tape is very interesting uh, prime minister keeps on saying uh, the red carpet and not red tape but that is again we have inherited uh, the british system but imagine if it was not there we would have inherited inherited something else so effectively we need to also deal with red tape uh, in its own uh, sort of interesting way but automation helps in that too uh, the interest rates were very high which they still are the infrastructure has been pathetic if you go anywhere in the world uh, you have huge you will if you compare our infrastructure with the rest of the world 
and even Mumbai's infrastructure with the belly, you will still start crying. That in 25 years, in Mumbai itself, we have not added too much infrastructure, while the population has increased a lot. And the labor laws, that we have labor laws. In fact, just now it's very topical, because today also I got so many uh, messages and Facebook and Twitter stuff on stopping uh, the issues in TCS, that some people are getting uh, retrenched, and that is a huge issue. And so for me, labor laws, what happened is uh, we thought by giving too much power to labor, uh, we are helping them. We end up hurting them. Because now, after having stringent labor laws, they are so stringent that if a labor doesn't come to uh, the factory, it's fine. You can't do anything with them. But the factory will have to continue to pay him the wages and so on and so forth. We created a situation where the industrialists are not willing to hire. Over the last 67 years, we have created labor laws, and because of that, we have created a royalty in organized labor, which is less than 1 or 2 percent of India's total labor. The other 97 percent people are working in unorganized areas because the organized people don't want to hire them. They can't hire, they can't fire. Since they can't fire, they can't hire. They will not hire, right? So effectively, the labor laws is also one of our biggest issues, and we need to be uh, worried that are we really getting into the right labor laws. Fortunately, some action has happened uh, in Rajasthan and so on and so forth. But I was just trying to list down the issues uh, which were there last year. One year has passed. Uh, new government is there. New prime minister is there. There is huge amount of hope. And what has been solved in last six, seven months of the new government? Uh, one is inflation has been solved. Inflation has come down suddenly. Many people tell me that it's not the government who has done it. Uh, but government is lucky, the Prime Minister is lucky that uh, the oil prices have come down and gold prices have come down and everything. And I say, boss, uh, at least you are a lucky Prime Minister, right? If you are a very smart Prime Minister but who is unlucky, what will happen? So effectively, it's good to have a lucky Prime Minister, probably India is lucky. Uh, but inflation has been solved in some ways. Oil prices have come down, we have not done much but they have come down. Food prices have come down, not only in India, but internationally. Uh, that's bringing down the prices. And all commodities, that is, not only food commodities, agricultural commodities, but copper, steel, cement, why they have come down? In last 20 years, the only uh, sort of acceleration of usage in all these commodities was coming from China. China was industrializing itself. China was building infrastructure at a pace which was unbelievable. China used it since concrete in last five years that U.S. had not used in last hundred years. And U.S. also industrialized and put in huge amount of infrastructure over last hundred years and then rebuilt it and so on and so forth. But China used that kind of steel, cement, nickel, cadmium and everything. And of course the food and so on and so forth. That it ended up increasing the prices of everything over the last 20 years in a secular way. There was a huge what do you call some of you who are uh, the students of economics, the terms of trade changed in favor of uh, commodities after 200 years. And suddenly, now China is slowing down. Why it's slowing down? Because China is becoming old. Because of their one-child policy, uh, they suddenly are becoming old. In 2017, will be the first year over the last 100 years that China will have less number of people coming to the job market than their previous year. So in 2016, if there are X number of people coming into the job market, in 2017, they will have less than X. And that is putting a huge pressure on the wages there. China's tricks of trade, the only USP was their young labor and less inflation in the wages of labor. And of course, very flexible labor laws. If you are able to create flexible labor laws, reduce red tape, our youth, our demographics is such that we are going to add one and a half crore youngsters into the job market every year for the next 20 years. 15 million new jobs need to be created. 30 crore new jobs over the next 20 years. It's a huge sum. Because we, we are sitting in a large country, we keep on hearing these crores and crores every day. We think it's easy to do. But one and a half crore is more than half the population of entire continent called Australia. One and a half crore is also the num more than the number of people that are un unemployed in the entire USA. 
when you if you re, if you are watching television nationally business television sometimes when unemployment rate comes down or comes up prices of stocks move up and down right the economies are doing well or not well by unemployment rate and total unemployment in us is 1.31 crore it is coming down and we have one and a half crore new jobs to be created every year for next 20 years it's a humongous task but it's not that we have not done it before and it's not that from now onwards we have this one and a half crore coming into job market. Last 20 years also we have added close to 1.2 crore new jobs every year. It's not something new to India, but effectively we need to create these jobs. And many of you have come here to understand why finance job is very much important and why finance job will take you where you want to go, that is have a good reasonable life, a life of dignity, a life which is rich in content, a life which is rich in achievement. And for me, that's why skills are very, very important. We need to impart skills in our youth. But problem about skills, when I, you know, I was born and I was told, we were totally taken saying you study for 25 years or 20 years and then you work on that skill which you acquired for next 40 years or 50 years. So you study and then you don't change. But today, the world is changing every day. When I was studying, people used to tell me that the only constant is change. And I couldn't even fathom, I couldn't even figure out what people meant actually. For very long, even after doing job, I didn't even figure out what, what did they mean, right? The change is only constant. And why it is affecting me that I need to be doing something about change. And then there used to be a lot of books about who moved my cheese and so on and so forth. Very small books you might like to read. But effectively, change has been phenomenal over the last 30 years since I came into the job market. Change has been phenomenal. Last 30 years I've seen changes which have not been seen in the last 10,000 years. The information technology and so on and so forth. They have not seen in the last 10,000 years. They have changed life fundamentally. But still, we learned something and we could work and almost our entire career, all four of us sitting on this side of the platform. We could learn up to age 25 and sort of work on that skill broadly over the next 30, 40 years of our lives. It will not happen to you. Because what has happened in the last 30 years was only a trailer. Next 30 years are going to change life fundamentally even more transformationally. Every five years, newer technologies will come newer ways of thinking will come, newer ways of getting together will come. And you need to not only study today, you not, need to not only worry about your career today, but every day. You will learn every day. I'll just give you perspective on what are the new technologies that are coming up so that whenever you get a chance, read up, try to be part of it, because the huge amount of wealth that is going to be created in future is going to be in the newer business. IT was single technology which changed India fundamentally over the last 30 years. Next 30 years, there are at least 10 technologies that are coming which will be larger than information technology and you have a chance to participate because you are young, you can learn things. I cannot learn newer things. You can learn newer things and you will have to continue to learn newer things. In my estimate, over the next 20 years, 70% jobs will be created which I have not or you have not or nobody has thought about today. Those jobs, like when I studied, I used to study com basically engineering and computers. And we even 20 years back couldn't imagine, or 30 years back couldn't imagine that a person sitting here will be teaching somebody else uh, Western classical music in Russia. Today, it's reality. People are paying Indian classical music teachers money. And so for me, technology has been a fundamental change and next 10 years or next 30 years, it's going to change very rapidly. You need to be ready to change your track, learn newer things, go into newer businesses. And also, if you don't do that, you will remain where you are. Life will pass you by. You have a choice to be lazy, but the future is about running on the treadmill. To stay at the same place, you will have to run very hard. So if you want to actually move forward, you will have to run very, very, very fast, right? So one of the technologies is called 3D printing. If you have heard of 3D printing, it's going to change life fundamentally in terms of manufacturing. You will be able to print things at home. Not printing of what we currently read, but you will be able to print television, you will be able to print guns, you will be able to print houses, you will be able to print chairs, and so on and so forth. Uh, robotics, 
is going to be another fundamental change. When I was studying, computers were in a place and 30 years they took off. Robotics is today in the same place, computers were 30 years back. They are going to change life fundamentally. You will have to, even if you are commerce students, if you are art students, be aware of them, try to experiment, try to get involved. Biotechnology, and the biggest changes in life is going to be about biotechnologies. You will have newer humans, newer lives, synthetic life, everything coming up. Big data is going to be another stuff which is going to change life fundamentally. Nanotechnology is going to change quite a lot. Body part manufacturing, you will be able to manufacture eyes, ears, and heart, and so on and so forth. Uh, you will have a lot of computers inside your body. Over the next 20, 30 years, you will have so many tiny computers moving around your body. Just now you are talking about variable computers, Google Glass and all. But on a 20 year scale, 30 year scale, you will have a different life. Be aware of that. Artificial intelligence is going to change again life quite a lot. Uh, genetically modified agriculture, whether we like it or not. Gujarat, in last 10 years, has had agricultural production increasing by 10% per year, per year, you know that? India's agriculture production has increased probably 2% per year, but Gujarat did that 10% per annum for last 10 years. How did that happen? I am a Gujarati, I come from that region, and I was under the impression it happened because of Narmada project. When I was speaking on such a conference, uh, one of the agriculture scientists, or uh, agriculture economists told me uh, that partially you are correct, that Narbada was great, but biggest reason is that genetically modified cotton was introduced in Gujarat, and in last 10 years, it has gone up by 850%. The production of cotton in Gujarat has gone up eight and a half times, uh, and that is the power of uh, the newer technology. Of course, space technology, India is leading, uh, and that is going to change life again quite a lot, even when you are not on, in the space. But uh, So basically for me, why I want you to be aware is there are many things coming. It's very exciting. It looks very, very promising for India specifically because India's population is young. It can learn newer things. And the, the biggest wealth that is going to happen is not in the past, it is in the future. And only youth can learn, youth can produce. All of us old people can only enjoy what you produce. So what are the government, what is the government doing to debottle like India? Because as I said, we had several issues, we had this great, great promising life that is coming up, and what all we needed to do? So of course some of the problems have been resolved, inflation and so on and so forth, interest rates will be resolved probably. Uh, but the taxation, India is totally uh, disconnected in, in, in its own way. It's connected many ways, but it's also disconnected in the taxation part. You have sales tax, which is each and every state puts in, then you have excise and you have various other taxes. It's being combined into a new tax called GST, goods and services tax. Then you have, so I've been told two, three minutes. So let me come back to uh, the issue of uh, the career in finance. Let me give you my own example and also the example of where you are sitting. This place used to be trading ring till 1995. And people who had skills to trade in floor were totally opposed to the new technology coming in. They were worried that what will happen to me. And they opposed, and Dina Mehta was one of the pioneers of uh, running of this exchange. She participated in automating this exchange. And today, we are converting to a convention hall. So the functions need to be performed. The trading had to be done. But today you do it on mobile, you do it on internet and so on and so forth. I joined as a banker and in my bank they were trying to automate the banking system of that bank. And we all went down and started shouting slogans against the automation because we thought our jobs will go away. And today every bank is automated. Why I am telling you this is don't resist. Stock market is an interesting framework. Finance is even more larger framework. Uh, if you remain in finance, uh, you are going to learn a lot. You will be, you know, on a scale of 20 years, you will be one of the smartest person around. If you are not in finance, if you are a gold medalist in your own stream, if you are, I was an engineer, I came into finance, and every day you learn a lot. If you are a gold medalist in your school, in your college, but if you are not in finance on a 10, 20 year scale, when you meet after that 20 year, you will realize how important it is. Also, finance gives you an ability 
to earn your money and help others. Save as well as earn returns on their uh, capital. And that's a noble cause. It's important that BSE Institute is also here. I can see some boards there. Uh, BSE Institute offers many courses in variety of areas from two years MBA style program to uh, capital markets, certification, depository certification, uh, insurance, um, mutual fund distribution, and so on and so forth. You can select many of them. You can also collect many of the certificates and become intermediaries, become your own business owner. Yourself, you can become brokers and so on and so forth. But it's a very, very exciting framework. India will require around 60 to 70 lakh people in finance. Today, we are into around one-tenth of that. This is a huge demand, and all of you are most welcome to come into this business. We would be delighted to have you. The changes uh, will happen. Some of the functions which intermediaries perform today may not be performed, uh, may not be required to be performed by humans later on. But if you are smart, you will be able to write that. You will be able to make even more money. With that, thank you very much for coming here. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chauhan. Uh, may I now request uh, Mrs. Dina Nata, Chairman of Capital Market Committee, to please give the introduction of the today's theme. I think uh, those standing behind, if you don't mind, you can come and sit on the carpet, there is no harm because I don't know how you are going to stand for two hours. So we wouldn't mind if you, because more chairs are coming. Kalpit, are they coming? Okay, good evening ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Prabodh Bhai Thakkar, President of IMC. Uh, Ashish uh, Chawad, CEO of uh, BSC Limited. Uh, Mr. Sangvi, uh, Deputy CEO of uh, IMC. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it gives me a great pleasure to see uh, so many of you uh, wanting to know about the careers in uh, capital market, in finance markets, to make it uh, big broader. Uh, for me, it's a it's a difficult task because we had our president who talked very spiritual about uh, old text and swadharma, and then we had Ashish who talked about all the future technologies, robotics, and whatnot. Uh, so I have to bring you back to earth and talk to you about uh, what this program is all about. And that is uh, basically to understand the career opportunities which are available in the finance market. As an employer, you know, over uh, almost 30 years that, uh, that I have been in business, I have been associated with exchange and wherever, uh, many times what I see is that suppose uh, if I advertise, you know, for wanting fresh MBAs, when, when the student comes for uh, an interview, almost 70-80% of them only want one thing what we want to be research analyst ok and of the students who come you know most of the, almost 30-40% are the previous batch car research analyst and they have come saying that uh, you know we are looking for a change so when I ask them why are you looking for a change you are already a research analyst no what we thought was research is actually not research what we thought should have been research, but it's not research. We are, you know, doing uh, something uh, which is, according to us, not research. So, you know, this whole dilemma which all the students face, when, like, for example, I one day decided I will uh, employ only financial planners in my, you know, front desk, which is my dealing desk, so that they understand all the products. So, I called some 60 people for interviews. And I told them only one job, ki you please sell me an SIP. You know, I am your customer. You please sell me an SIP. And I am very sorry to say that most of them had very little knowledge about mutual funds, though they are thought about mutual funds. And forget selling, I mean convincing, understanding importance of the product and actually making the customer feel the need of the product. This whole thing was missing. So you know, this is the kind of, uh, unfortunately, a lot of uh, professors and teachers are also there in the audience today. You know, let me tell you that the preparation of students for taking up a job in the finance industry is very much lacking in the syllabuses that we have. For example, research. Now, what is a research methodology? I mean, research is a very rigorous job which is there. 
And there are so many kinds of research. There is market research, understanding how the markets move. There is fundamental research about companies. There is sectorial research. There is technical analysis. And so many different kinds of you know, uh, research are there where the methodology and the rigors and testing, you know, what you are predicting, what are the uh, future models so far as the um, evaluation of a company is concerned. For example, in, in fundamental research, there are so many methodologies. So you need to know econometrics, you need to know statistics, you need to know how the oil industry works if you really have to predict the oil prices. So you know, this kind of, you know, in absence of the rigorous uh, amount of education that would go into, you know, a, a preparing a student. You know, everybody is only MBA in finance. I am also MBA in finance. I went for admission uh, for PhD program uh, in uh, IIT and I got selected also. But when they saw my certificate, MBA certificate, they said, you have done MBA 25 years ago. So now you again do MBA. Out instead of four semesters, we will give you concession of one semester. But all your knowledge is completely outdated. You again do MBA, then only we can admit you in the PhD program. So, you know, this is the, uh, you know, kind of uh, rigor which is required to really be part of the finance market. And I am telling you something from my personal experience. I have a great passion for the stock markets. I mean, there is no other market which is so volatile, which is keeps changing everything that happens. If Putin is going to sneeze, there will be an impact on the stock market. If Mr. Obama does not show his face for one day, there is going to be impact on stock market. So everything that happens in the world, there is some of the other impact which happens in the stock market. And I don't think you, there can be something more exciting than that. I mean, it is, it is so fantastic that everything that happens anywhere in the world, it impacts the market either in some other market, it will impact the European market and the European market will impact the Indian market, the Indian market will impact the uh, Singapore market. So every, all the markets are so interlinked. The foreign exchange market is linked, the debt market is linked and the equity market is linked. Because anything that happens to interest rates is going to have impact on stock market. Anything that happens to rupee is going to have impact on the stock market. So all aspects of the economy are affecting these markets. And this is something very, very exciting which is there. And, and I am sure that, you know, you all of you have made a very good beginning by at least coming to the seminar to understand what is the kind of uh, career prospects which are there. And what I have tried to do is I have gone by the number of institutions because after all, if you want to take up a job in a in a finance market um, institution, you need to know what are the different kinds of institutions. So we have got mutual funds, we have got stock brokers, we have got PE funds, we have got FIIs. Then we have the regulator, which is SEBI. Uh, then we have rating agencies. We have banks. Now, we are not going to talk about banking jobs, like, you know, getting deposits and anything. But the in the banking sector, what are the capital market uh, related activities which are there? And we also have a, a, a risk and surveillance organization, you know, people who specialize in this. So we have tried to go by the different institutions which are there. And they would be, you know, explaining to you. And of course, every at the end of every session, we have a question answer session also. So you can ask a, a number of questions uh, to, to the panel members. So with that, you will be having, you know, hopefully, uh, at the end of uh, the, these deliberations, some idea about what the careers are. But let me just give you two, three things which as skill set you need to prepare, which is first thing you need to read a lot. You know, you have to read, read and read. You know, you have to be like that magnet. Anything that you see around you, you should keep on reading it. So you need to read a lot. Second thing is you need to analyze a lot because what you have read, have you understood, go and discuss with somebody. So what is the impact of what you have read, a particular news, what is the impact? So that curiousness and that sensitivity to link with things, that is the second thing. Discuss with your father, discuss with your teacher, discuss with your friends, oh, this was the news, what is happening around us? You know, every day, and you know, thanks to what Ashish said, the Modi government, 
it is actually preparing the country you know if you go to see the entire country is being prepared and it is being enabled so that all of you can go and you know experience your skill sets and you can contribute something so country is being prepared for you know people like you for all the youngsters who are joining the job market so this is the kind of effort which the government is taking so second thing is please read please try to analyze third is you need to write well i mean you know it is quite ridiculous to say you need to write read and write all of you will say of course we can read and write but writing good english writing proper grammatical english because many times you know we write what we think and 90% of the times our thoughts are so confused and because we have confused thoughts what we write is also all confused you start with some one thought and you end up with something else so you, know, you need to read well write well because lot of work in finance is going to be in report writing and other things and and last is computing you know having excel uh, training having advanced excel training i think these things are four five things which are uh, according to me a very general preparatory kind of things which are required and of course uh, we have got an excellent panel of speakers uh, who would be uh, i am very sure uh, with their own experience of uh, more than you know one one and a half two decades in each of the uh, uh, each of the industry and the sections that they represent they will be able uh, to really guide you through and i am i congratulate all of you once again for being here in uh, large numbers and this hall which you see is a very uh, you know very very precious and very to all of us because this is where the trading used to happen once upon a time and and you know we can the pictures which you saw uh in the film which was there you saw all the people who were trading fortunately you don't have to trade learn the sign language because when we entered the ring we used to trade by doing sign language but that you don't have to learn but of course there are many more things and uh, and uh, i'm sure uh, we will uh, we will have good interactions uh, at the end of the sessions and i'm thankful to all the speakers and uh, and all those who help uh, us organize this program uh, thank you very much Uh, thank you mrs mehta uh, may i now request mr jitendra sagmi uh, deputy director general of indian merchants chamber to uh, give vote of thanks uh, respected president of imc shri prabodh bhai thakkar shri ashish kumar ji chauhan md and ceo of bsc limited and dina ben mehta chairperson of our capital market committee and all the youngsters who have gathered uh, this afternoon uh, i am very happy to be uh, to stand before you to propose a vote of thanks normally imc is organizing about 180 to 200 programs in a year uh, uh, where the average age of attendees may be even uh, 55 60 this program is very unique in that sense i am sure the average age of the gathering over here may not be over 35 for you oh 25 so this is something unique and i must congratulate dina ben for giving us an excellent program like this you know uh, actually lot has been said i would only like to add that there is a opportunities galore and this program will enable you to tap those potent potential opportunities that are available not only in india but abroad according to the national skill market corporation 500 million skilled jobs 500 million skilled people will be required over the next 10 years and it is this program which will enable you to sharpen your skill and to be one of those 500 million people for whom the opportunities are waiting in the wing uh, it is very interesting that demographic situation is very interesting in india which has been mentioned here it has to be converted to demographic dividend which this program can help us to do otherwise it can happen or turn to a demographic disaster 
लास्ट ओनली वन थिंग दैट इट विल बी द ओनली कंट्री इंडिया विच विल हैव लेबर सरप्लस रेस्ट ऑफ द एंटायर वर्ल्ड ओवर द नेक्स्ट फाइव और टेन ईयर्स विल हैव मैन पावर शॉर्टेज सो हियर लाइज योर ऑपरचुनिटीज विथ दोज वर्ड्स आई वुड लाइक टू Propose formal vote of thanks to our Capital Market Committee Chairperson Dina Ben for giving us an excellent program. And this is not the only program I think for this year. This must be the second or third program like this that that Dina Ben has organised. And of course Ashish Kumar ji for supporting it so strongly and making this historical convention hall available for this program. Of course our President uh, Pramod Bhai Thakkar. who has always sort of given free hand to the chairperson whenever such excellent programs are being organized then uh, bsc for co sponsoring today's event mr amrish datta md and ceo of bsc institute for supporting the event all the panelists without naming them i will say thanks thank you very much for being part of this program and enlightening the youngsters who are the future leaders of india and last but not the least i think chandra shekhar thakur ji uh, corporate trainer of cdsl who has helped us a lot uh, in publicizing this program and i am told that there are students from 50 colleges all over maharashtra from pune aurangabad sangli and all those places so thank you all once again and last i am reminded of this words of mahatma gandhi when dinaben was talking about learning and uh, reading mahatma gandhi had said that you live as if you are going to die tomorrow that means very honestly and sincerely but you learn as if you are going to live forever thank you so much हेलो एक्सक्यूज मी सर मे आय रिक्वेस्ट मिस्टर प्रमोद ठाकर टू प्लीज प्रेझेंट अ मेमेंटो टू मिस्टर आशिष कुमार चौहान सो फर्स्ट पॅनल सो नाव वी विल स्टार्ट विथ अवर फर्स्ट पॅनल डिस्कशन मे आय रिक्वेस्ट मिस्टर अमरीश दत्ता एम डी एन सी ओ बी एस सी इन्स्टिट्यूट टू प्लीज कम ऑन द डायस अदर पॅनलिस्ट मिस्टर नवनीत मोनोट चीफ इन्व्हेस्टमेंट ऑफिसर एस बी आय म्युच्युअल फंड मिस्टर आदित्य मेहता नॅशनल रिटेल बिझनेस हेड आसिफ सिंग मेहता इन्व्हेस्टमेंट इंटरमिडिएट्स मिस दिप्ती नीलकंठन चीफ ऑपरेटिंग ऑफिसर from gm financial limited ms jyoti tandan uh, head compliance and company secretary nomura financial advisory and securities private limited this will not welcome to the first uh, panel discussion on uh, careers in financial market Uh, we have an uh, electrifying panel uh, today and uh, you would have noticed that how balanced we have we have all the ladies on both sides of the panel and uh, we have the men in between so we want to make sure that uh, we have a free willing chat so we have about, about an hour for ourselves and what i'm going to do is uh, run a few questions on careers of financial market opportunities in the market among all of us and then leave uh, the last few minutes uh, open to all of you to ask questions uh i'll of course also encourage uh, that uh, uh, you ask a lot of questions so that uh, you know all your doubts on financial markets and other things are are covered and captured well so uh, without any any wasting of any more time what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to start off with uh, navneet first uh, since he's the closest um navneet this is a good time to be uh, in india you know uh, we're doing well the markets are well inflation is down um uh, uh we have a good new government i think except the cricket team almost everything else seems to be doing good so do you think this is a good time to get the financial market what are what are your thoughts no surely uh, first of all he mentioned about the two women actually the i have a favorite line that uh, 
the history of world would have been different. I think 2008 wouldn't have happened in terms of the global financial crisis if Lehman Brothers had more sisters on its board. Uh, on a more serious note, uh, in terms of, of course, I mean, we, we are at a very interesting juncture. I think next couple of years, India is likely to produce an economic miracle which is unparalleled in human history. But I think there has never been any democracy which has made the kind of growth that probably we have been making for the last 20 years and we are going to make for the next 10 or 20 years with the kind of institutions that uh, we are put in place. So the kind of independent central bank, the kind of market regulator, the kind of election commission, 800 million people voting. I mean, all those great institutions and at, at, at such low base of, of per capita GDP of $1,500 per capita. So it's really going to, for, for the next several hundred years, I think it's going to be such, such a miracle. It's a great time to be here. Obviously, I mean, financial markets are going to be a critical component, critical part of the whole, you know, the, the growth story of India. If I just do a parallel, so let's say talking about only my industry, the asset management, just to give you some uh, numbers. So the total global asset management industry is 87 Seven trillion dollars, which is more than the global GDP. And just to put this, these some of the numbers in perspective, the largest bank in the world is ICBC of China, and that is a set base of 2.7 trillion dollars. The largest asset manager in the world is BlackRock, and that has got a set base of $3.7 trillion. So the largest asset manager is substantially larger than the largest bank in the world. In India, of course, it's quite different. I mean, where the entire mutual fund industry is 10 or 11 lakh crores, even if you add, let's say, the money which is managed by the insurance, pension, and some of the other institutions, private equity funds and all, would still be a very small fraction of the total GDP. But the factors that have driven the growth of asset management world over, I'm sure the same factors are present today. So when you have a rising economy, you have good entrepreneurs, you have the good you know, market infrastructure in terms of stock exchange, regulator, uh, you know, the whole uh, infrastructure which is in place. You have young population, rising incomes, and they have to save for retirement. And that is the right ingredients, I mean, in place for a sustained growth of the capital market, of the financial markets. And I think we've got that in place, and we have a very, very long way to go. So at this stage, I'll just take that much of time. We can go more deeper into individual industries and what are the options for, for, for the young people to enter in, in this specific segments later. Sure. So, um, moving on to you, Arit, uh, you're of course uh, one of the youngest in the panel, and I want to ask you that, you know, how do you see this uh, opportunity in India? I mean, is it that uh, the opportunity uh, is right here knocking at the door, or are we sometime away from it? What's your advice to students uh, to grab this by both their hands? Uh, is this on? Um, I would... Uh, I would agree with you that the opportunity is massive. Um, my advice to students in general, uh, and as you said, I'm the youngest here, so I'm, I'm still a student myself. Uh, uh, there are three things that you really need to, uh, need to do in an economy like this. One is never forget your ethics. Um, there is plenty of room for ethical people in the world. Uh, don't ever think that being ethical will put you at a disadvantage to those who use unethical means. Um, <coughs> remember, you are responsible for someone else's money and their financial future. That is the first point. The second point is, please go into detail and know your job well. Uh, the biggest disservice you can do to yourself is if you don't know your job well. Uh, forget about the disservice to other people. And the, the third thing, is that always be open to do sales, okay? I started my career at sales as a salesperson. A um, lot of you are commerce uh, students. You'll end up in jobs which require you to sell, uh, especially as your first job. Uh, that, that things that you will learn in sales will never go to waste in your career. And it's, it doesn't have to be your career, but it can definitely be your first job. So I think those people who are always open to doing sales, will always find jobs quicker, they will always grow quicker, and it will install a can-do attitude in you which will, you will, which will be useful for your whole career and your whole life. Uh, if you do it ethically and if you do it well, you know your job, uh, I think you are very well poised to take advantage of all these opportunities. 
Uh, great, Aditya. You know, I'm glad you mentioned uh, ethics right in the beginning, and you know, I'll probably come back subsequently later and ask some uh, more questions on how we could drive ethics in our formal education. But moving on, uh, Deepthi, uh, you know, uh, you of course uh, uh, been uh, a part of the industry for long, and uh, you've seen. Uh, a fair amount of ups and downs. Uh, what's your advice to youngsters uh, who are planning to uh, explore a career in the financial markets? Um, first of all, I would say welcome. This is a great industry to be in. Um, having said that, uh, I would also want to first and foremost uh, put up a point of caution. Uh, I don't know if uh, everybody today uh, is as enamored as earlier the people used to be, but generally my experience was, and particularly in context 